Hey all my movie maniac friends out there, it's me the movie monster, and today's review is gonna slam you harder to the body mat than me body slamming you with my 36 centimeter pythons. What you gonna do when movie mania runs wild on you? <sighs> Thirty-six centimeter python. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, everyone. Mark Movie Man here. Welcome to the Final Cut Consequence Movie. I'm trying to finish these up before my next prediction show, and this one was suggested by the Schmoes Nose, and it is No Holds Barred. One of the first, if not first, like supported, sanctioned WWF films. I do believe that was created. Now, this was back when WWF was called WWF, and it had the big, bold, fat gold letters. They were at their high point, and Vince McMahon said, TV's just not good enough. We gotta hit the movie market. So what do they do? They come up with No Holds Barred. The story of Rip, played by Hulk Hogan, who's playing Hulk Hogan with just a different name in the film, is a popular wrestling star. <laughs> It's a stretch of acting for him, I know. And anyway, he's a very popular wrestling star. Well, Kurt Fuller plays Brill, the head of the World Cable Network, I think it's called. Or, uh, and basically, he wants Hogan's character on his sh on his network. Well, uh, Rip says, no way to that. I'm sticking to you know his loyalty. Well, Brill goes to extreme lengths to coax Rip to finally wrestle on his channel, which also involves bringing out a new super wrestler in the form of Tommy Tiny Lester's Zeus, okay? And he comes up, Brel comes up with this idea of a uh, battle of the tough guys. Worst title for any show on TV in fake or real world known to man. Anyway, battle of the tough guys. Well, he, through a number of other criminal activities, coaxes Rip to wrestle Zeus on his network finally. Folks, this movie, ah. Oh. It's made like a made-for-TV film brought to the big screen, and it should have stayed on TV. And that's the reason why, because it mostly involves uh, behind-the-camera work by people who did nothing but TV. So, of course, it feels exactly like a made-for-TV movie on the big screen. Now, I admit it, I paid money to see it when it was out. I was a big wrestling fan, still am, but I was a huge wrestling fan back then and loved the WWF. It was at its high point, you know, and so I admit I went to see see it. Now looking back on it, I actually own a copy. It is even more cheesy and bad as <laughs> than I remember it. Oh, uh, you know, you got Hulk Hogan in here. No character stretch whatsoever. Still playing Hulk Hogan, just under a different name, Rip. Which, by the way, if you do a drinking game to this film, uh, if you do a shot every time you hear the word Rip within the first 15 minutes of this movie, uh, you'll be dead drunk and not miss the rest of the movie, which may actually be a good thing. Now, they do try to do some romance thing. They've got Joan Severance in here adding some beauty uh, to the palette, but she must have just needed a paycheck. She just came off of doing See No Evil, Hear No Evil with uh, Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor, and she got into this film. Not sure why, but I think she fired her agent after that. Uh, you got Kurt Fuller playing Brell, the head of the network, and uh, I love his character. He's always good at playing a bad guy, a vicious kind of over-the-top a-hole, okay? And so he does well in that role here. And Tommy Tiny Lister, he doesn't have much dialogue. His sole purpose is to stand there and look pretty badass, which he does. Now, for those of you who are not yet of legal drinking age, you may recognize Tommy Tiny Lister from uh, Dark Knight, uh, which he played the tattoo guy who grabs the remote, he's the ex, the, the convict on the boat. That's him, okay? That's Zeus, alright? Uh, you know, this is like the wizard for wrestling movie. Uh, you know, the wizard for, again, those of you who still can't drink, um, the Wizard was a film put out by Nintendo, it had Fred Savage in it, and uh, the, its sole purpose really was to show off the Power Glove and promote a new video game. This one, this film has a total field, no holds barred, like its sole purpose was to bring Tiny Lister into the wrestling environment. And yes, he did go on to wrestle for a number of years after this film in WWF, in live matches and such, and those were actually quite fun to see. He did well there. Uh, you know, this film is cheesy, 
badness. I mean, the acting and script are so, you know, though it was more well written than many of the things that have come out of WWF matches lately, uh, excuse me, WW Entertainment matches lately, uh, it still is something that if you're a wrestling fan, you may want to watch for nostalgia. Uh, but really, this is one that should only be caught if you're flipping through channels and happen to see it on cable. Uh, I bought the DVD just because out of nostalgia stake. Uh, but it, it is not a, not a good film. Hogan does better acting in his sex tape than he did in this movie. And that'll about do it for us here at the Final Cut. Till next time, my movie maniacs. Remember, eat your vitamins, support independent cinema, and keep that ticket stub. Whew.